Subscriptions. Ask musicians about four-part harmony or parallel compression, and they may or may not give an answer. But ask them about subscriptions, and they will answer passionately. Trust me, I've tried. Now, one of those answers really stood out to me, because this viewer reckoned that most of you have got it all wrong. We'll look at that later, because despite his really persuasive argument, it hasn't changed the advice I'm going to give later on in this video to one DAW maker in particular. This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Traditionally, of course, we would buy our music software, or at least the right to use it, forever, something called a perpetual license. You pay a one-off fee and you own the right to use that version of the software for as long as you like. Now, normally you'd also get some support included for a specific period of time. And the great news was if that company completely disappeared, you usually were able to continue to use that piece of software. There are some downsides though. You do only own that version of the software. When the new versions with their fancy features come out, you're not entitled to those. Although you may be entitled to a nice upgrade price. Also, that support is gonna run out at some point. And by the way, when you paid for that software, the specification said that it would work with some specific operating systems. It didn't promise that it would work with future operating systems. And as you move on to the new version of Windows or Mac operating systems, you may find that that software just doesn't work as well as you wanted it to. But there is an option, of course. Subscriptions. The answer to all of your woes. For a small monthly or annual fee, you'll always have the latest version of the software, it'll always be supported, and it'll always work on the latest operating systems. You may even find you get a whole bunch of other software which you may or may not want. But it's not all sunshine and roses you may find that in the long run, you pay much more for this software than you would have done if you'd stuck to just one version. You may also find that if this company suddenly disappears, so does your access to your projects. And whatever you do, don't have a downturn in your financial situation because missing payments for the subscription may mean that you also lose access to your projects, making unemployment that much more miserable. But there is a third way. The so-called hybrid model is a kind of a compromise. You still pay a monthly or annual subscription, but after a fixed period of time, usually one year, you get to own a perpetual license, getting the benefits of that as well as the benefits of the subscription if you continue to pay it. Now, the devil is in the detail, but if this is marketed correctly, usually people see the sense in it. Recently, Presonus introduced it, and back in the day, it was also a model that Cakewalk or Sonar back then also used. Now, there is another model which companies sometimes seem determined to introduce, even though it may be the death of them. There's all kinds of ways that you can upset your customers, but one surefire way to get them really, really annoyed is the subscription only model. This is where there's no choice, no choice for a perpetual license or a hybrid model. You must get this software via subscription. Ask Waves about this. It took them a few days to give in to their customers who were really irritated by this and give them credit because Avid with Pro Tools took like a couple of years to give in to the revolution. So, so silly. I can't imagine how many people during that time tried out the competition and found out actually it was a little bit better. So I have to say my highly unscientific research has shown that most of you seem to like to own your software. You like perpetual licenses. And this way I find myself in a bit of a minority. But it has to be said, I am a YouTuber. I like to have the latest version of the software to show you guys. I'm usually running the latest operating systems and I definitely need ongoing support. I can't afford any downtime. And that may be a reason 
reason that many of you who use this software in a business may prefer the subscription model, especially for example if you're a recording studio or perhaps you compose professionally from home, you want to make sure you don't have any downtime. So that's my reason, but what reason did that viewer give that I mentioned at the beginning of the video? I want to get this right, so I'm going to read it word for word. Stephen says, I'm an accountant, so I tend to really break these things down. And for me, I don't think subscriptions are quite the ripoff people think. For example, if I were to buy a load of premium plugins for £1,000, I would own them forever. If I signed up for a monthly sub of £15 for all the same plugins, it would take me five and a half years to be any worse off than buying outright. But at the rate technology is advancing, surely I'd be buying a few new plugins here and there along the way. Plugins that would be included for no extra cost in my subscription. That's where the subscriptions add real value in my opinion. And I won't bore you with adding in other factors like weighing up the growth differential between £1,000 and the price increases on a sub. Now, in fairness to Stephen, before you give him a hard time in the comments, he also said, all this being said, the one thing that I really support strongly is that people should be given a choice to which way they prefer. Good on you, Stephen. Now, what I really liked about this response, whether you agree or disagree with it, it's based on some logic, not on emotion. And I kind of did get the feeling that some people were making an emotional decision about this, especially when it comes to kind of having the feeling of owning a piece of software. Now, this is entirely up to you. These are your life choices. But I would personally advise that you make a logical choice based on your specific situation. It may well be that at the end of that logical decision, you still land on a perpetual license. Now, on the other hand, in terms of companies trying to introduce subscription, I do have some sympathy for them. I don't think we want to deny any of these companies their ability to make or maximize a profit, so long as they do it in a way that also benefits the customer. I'm not immune to these forces, which is why I'm so happy that my sponsor, DistroKid, make it cheap and easy for you to release your music to platforms like Spotify, Amazon, Google Play, etc. If you follow the VIP link in the description down below, you'll get 7% off your first year of membership. Now, if I were so bold as to write a letter to one company in particular, it may go something like this. Dear BandLab, since your announcement last year that you'll soon be releasing Cakewalk Next and Cakewalk Sonar, you have neglected to inform the community about the pricing models for these much anticipated pieces of software. This vacuum has left lots of speculation about all kinds of horror stories, including subscription-only models. Some people are hanging in there for dear life, though I fear some have run off to the evils of Studio One and the very grim Reaper. Please rectify this situation ASAP, signed Creative Source and friends. I think perhaps that we're all suffering from a little bit of subscription fatigue. It's not just our music software, it's Netflix, Spotify, Xbox Live, Cloud Storage. All of these little bits add up to one big bit and each month we get a little bit of bill shock. Perhaps why we're so grumpy about this. Now I know that I don't really need to invite you, but if you've got an opinion on this, please do let me know in the comments down below. Now you may strongly disagree with some of my opinions in this video. If you do, I only ask that we remain friends and that I see you in the next video.